Hi, I'm sorry to have to make yet another video on this, but I'm trying to do my due diligence. If I'm going to scold an atheist for being a bad scholar, I don't want to make the same mistake, okay? Um, so this video is just to cover more on what you're seeing on screen, the addendum in particular about malista, which is the word right here. Okay, it's usually mis in Josephus they mistranslate it as great or greatest prosperity. Okay, which I cover in the video in here. Okay, right here is I can't I can't highlight it, but you see where the little seashell cursor is. This is Melista in Greek. Okay. Now, the reason why I have to make this video is I want to make sure that you can check what I'm saying. All right, if I'm going to scold Zoroaster for being a bad scholar, I don't want to make the same mistake as he does. The same thing when I scold Christians for being bad scholars. Okay, so here's how you check what I told you. The trouble is, is you can't check it easily. Okay, I learned about superlatives versus comparatives in early Greek versus late Greek as part of learning the Bible under my pastor. You don't have 40 years to learn what I did, so I'm trying to figure out how can I give you a quicker way to understand it. Because the use of Melista here is a big tip off to the date of the text. Okay, and that's what I say in the video description here. See, right along here. Melissa, you'll have to read all that. And if you guys need me to do it, I can trace the way the word is used in the Bible. Okay, I've just summarized it here. All right. But let's say that you don't want to go through all that. Let's say instead you want to Google. Okay. The problem with Googling on this topic is that the scholarship is not, um, it's kind of sloppy. Okay. A lot of these sites that you can find are either written by sort of like amateurs, although I should be classified along with them, or they're very ignorant of the actual history of Greek comparatives versus superlatives. Like this guy here. He didn't know anything about the history. And he lists stuff that's just flat not true. Okay. There was another one. Was it earlier here or is it on the next page? Um, oh, no, it wasn't this one. It wasn't this one. It was a guy, um, probably don't even want to mention his name. There was a, there's an, another guy at um, charisminfo.com dot com or dot net or dot org who actually charted out the superlatives versus the comparatives but his chart is misleading because what he lists as being superlatives in the Bible are not actually superlatives in the text but comparatives see the important thing to know here is that the, the Greek superlative did not exist okay in literature it didn't exist it was considered gauche it was considered something that the that you did if you were an uncultured person and it wasn't until um, after 50 late 50s AD or so that it began to be used a lot and therefore this is a way you can date ancient Greek of, a, of different decades within the same first century all right. So all the stuff you're going to find here in Google confounds con confounds the two. In other words, this is a late development starting around the late 50s AD. The use of the superlative in Greek. It wasn't around. That's why it's not in the Bible. Okay? It starts in about the late 50s. You won't find it anywhere in the Old Testament. You do find it in modern Greek, and you do find it beginning especially around the time of Hadrian. Then it becomes considered educated to use a superlative. In other words, in English, if I said, if I said, um, 
very most. That's that, that's not proper English, really. The expression is used a lot in common speech, but it's not it's not proper English. If I said very unique, that also is improper English, although a lot of people say it because the the word unique doesn't take an adjective. Okay, we're talking about something that's very specific like this. The superlative did not exist in ancient Greek. It was misused by people who didn't know Greek very well, you know, like all words are. But it wasn't part of proper Greek until it started to become popular around the, the middle, late 50s, and that's, of course, Josephus' writing between 70 and 110 A.D. Okay, so if you were to Google on this, you're going to get all kinds of misinformation. All right, and that's going to make you frustrated and think that Brainout's an idiot, la, la, la. And I don't care if you think I'm an idiot. I care that you get the right information. So here's a guy who's an atheist who is a Greek teacher. He's a retired Greek teacher. Okay, I really like this guy. He's one of my favorite atheists. His name is Teneral. This is his channel. You'll be able to click on his channel in my video description and, you know, subscribe to him if you want. He's he's a wonderful man. I really I really have enjoyed watching his videos. And um you know, ask him if I'm all wet when I'm telling you that there were no superlatives in ancient Greek, okay? Because he's an atheist, you'll trust him, okay? I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure what level of teacher he was in Greek, but he reads it every day, okay? And he's been teaching it for decades. So, you know, if he's not sure of the answer, he'll go look it up. You see what I'm saying? So that you can test what brain out a Christian is saying with an atheist you respect. Okay, and he's a, he's a neat guy anyway. Um, you know, don't bombard him with questions, okay? Because you know, he deserves to have some time, you know, to himself. But here he is. His name is Teneral, and that will be in the video description so that you can click on the link and ask him about whether superlatives were in ancient Greek. And the reason to do that is because it helps us date the Bible text as well as Josephus because of the word malista. It's been in use, I better say this part so Tanneral won't scold me. Malista has been in use since Homer. Here's a citation of where malista is used in Homer, but it's an adverbial use. It roughly translates like French surtout. It, it means most of all, of first importance, Aristotle used it that way, Demosthenes uses it that way, Herodotus used it that way, and all those guys predate, you know, the first century A.D. But that's all. It, it's like a little adverbial word, malista. It's not a true superlative, but it's got that sort of informal force of, like in English, first of all, of first importance, most of all, above all. Okay, but the Bible, here's what's so important. The Bible doesn't use the phrase. And it has the same kind of informal common meaning I just gave you. So the big question is, why doesn't the Bible use the phrase? And the answer is because it wasn't in usage, commonly in usage. It wasn't commonly in usage at the time the Bible was written. And you can trace this because Paul starts to use it frequently in the late 50s AD. He uses it in Acts when he's making his speech, Galatians, Philippians, Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. Okay, he uses it once or twice in Acts. Let me see, I, I've got the verses here on my other computer. Okay, to, to give you the, the verses, the actual verses, where it is. It's not used in the Gospels at all. Okay, the first time it's used in, it's not used in the Old Testament at all. Um, it's used in Acts 20, 38, Acts 25, 26, Acts 26, 3. So you see, it suddenly appears. 
Now Luke wrote the book of Acts, but he's quoting Paul. Okay. And then um, the next time it's used is by Paul himself in Galatians 6.10. After that, my favorite verse, Philippians 3.8. Okay. That's um, isn't that the one that's got Skubala in it. Yeah, Philippians 3, 8. It's got a swear word in it. Modern English is shit. Uh, Greek word there is skubala. Modern Greek is scat. Okay, Paul's concluding his works are shit. He's using a swear word. So it's understand. Oh, he doesn't use melista in that verse. I'm sorry, that's modern Greek. Skubala is the ancient Greek, but melista is modern Greek, and it's not being used in the Old Testament. I mean, the New Testament text. Galatians 6, 10, after Acts... The next one is Galatians 6.10. After that, um, Philippians 4.22. And it's used in the traditional sense, like, uh, like uh, Homer used it, most of all. Okay, the next time it's used is in 1 Timothy 4.10. Um, also still used in the traditional sense of Homer. Now, 1 Timothy 5.8. 1 Timothy 5.17, he's using it a lot in the Timothy books. 2 Timothy 4.13, Titus 1.10, Philemon 1.16. And what's important to know about that, well, it's not in Hebrews. Okay, I thought it was in Hebrews. It's not in Hebrews or Greek either. Um, what's important to notice about that is that when Paul is using it, in each case, he's writing to Gentiles, Galatians, Philippians, okay, first, oh no, it's not in Thessalonians, first and second Timothy, Timothy was a convert, okay, Titus, Titus was a convert, Philemon, he was a convert, okay, Paul's using it to Gentiles, you don't find it used at all by Jews in their conversation, so, so that's an important um, index, you know, because our dear boy, um, Josephus, is writing to a Gentile, namely Titus. All of his books are, are written, except for Contra Appium, all of his books are written basically, basically to Titus, to ingratiate himself with Titus, and to try and, you know, get a better deal for the Jews. Okay, the only other time that Melista is used... Um, is in 2 Peter 2.10, and that's also used kind of the way it's used in um, Homer, which, you know, I show you here in the Iliad. Okay, that's the line where you'll find Melista used. I'm sure it's used other places, but I just wanted to give you one citation. Okay, so if you're trying to chase down, well, is Brain out making this up? Because I'm accusing Zoroaster of being a bad scholar. I don't want to be as guilty, so here's my source. You've seen what I had to say. You've, I've listed the Bible verses now. You can Google here, but you're, but you're not going to get good answers here. Okay? Because they've lumped the ancient and the later Greek together. Okay, the, 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 the writings here, the sources here are not good. They should be better than they are, but they're not. Okay, um, so what you need to do, because Teneral's really educated in classical Greek, go to Teneral. Okay, he's an atheist, so he's a guy that you'll probably trust. Ask him if, you know, what I'm saying is true, or to chase it down, because he'll be able to give you a more authoritative set of um, books you can read. He's got a great library. Okay, so anyway, that's it. Signing off. Sorry this always takes so long.